the Radio Women Breakfast. Right now we're going to um, chat with Janice Marriott, who um, is an award-winning author, also very keen gardener, um, and also writer, as I just mentioned, because she's an author. That makes a lot of sense. But she's also a tutor as well in that um, particular realm of things. So you might see her work in the Herald on Sunday, also uh, New Zealand House and Garden as well. She's got a website, JaniceMarriott.com. And uh, she's going to be sharing some of her experiences in a bit of a, um, a workshop at a thing called the Creative Hub. Janice joins us via <laughs> Skype video this morning. Good morning to you, Janice. Good morning, Lynn. And uh, looking after your grandson as well, I am you? looking after my grandson, yes. Well, and this you... is the reason that I've moved up to Auckland and have a new life. <laughs> Gosh, that is dedication to family. I really respect that. That's re- it's really, really nice. So you, you left your um, immaculate garden in Wellington, right? Indeed, I did, yeah. Um, and... Yeah, that was a very hard thing to do. Yeah. Um, and it was something I'd never imagined doing. So all the gardening I'd done, um, I just assumed, you know, I'd be there forever yes. to reap the benefits of it. But, yeah, I just walked out and came up to Auckland to be grandma. Oh, it's really nice. Well, it means, I guess, you can set up a whole new garden. Um, you're, in, you're in Mount Eden there. Have you started that process? I have. Yeah, I have started that process. Um, I've got a little cottage with a surprisingly large garden behind it that goes up the slope of the volcano. And um, I can see the sky tower from my garden. Nice. And I just need to make to rebuild the walls so that I can have a dog. Because um, you can't have a garden without a dog. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> and I'd say yeah, we, I'd say you can't have a garden without a cat. Personally, that's that's. I've got one of those. <laughs> oh, good. I've got one of those. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So. Um, it's a completely different kind of garden, it will be, and it's a different way of gardening because I've, I've decided that it's going to be a garden with children. So, Speaking yeah, of. Exactly. Hey. So I need a lawn um, <laughs> and I need edible, everything edible in the garden. So Good. all the trees I'm planting are edibles. Isn't that so, – well, all the trees are as well. That's, that's I mean, yeah, so I know, guess fruit plant, trees and what, olives or yeah, something? Yeah, plums and pears and apples and um, – or guavas, of course, for the kids. And, and I've got a berry wall, so I've got, you know, all kinds of berries, including blueberries and those big hybrid sort of super berries and yeah. things. Um, yeah, so anything that kids can just go and pick – because flowers are all nice and everything, but um, they're, they're, they tend to be a bit of a waste of space, perhaps? Well, I think that flowers, for me, I can just sprinkle annual seeds everywhere and get lots of annuals. I like flowers, mm. but they just grow between the cabbages and lettuces and potatoes and things. And they serve, <laughs> in fact, um, I suppose if you pick the right flowers and they um, get rid of pests and things, don't they? Compl- yeah. Complimentary. Oh, yeah, they do, definitely. Yep. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Yeah. Always uh, have marigolds among your cabbages. Yes, indeed. Keep away the uh, white fly. Um, but let's let's get on to uh, the writing side of things. Uh, how long have you been been doing children's books? I would have been doing children's books for about thirty years. Yeah, long time. Wow. And, um, yeah, it's something I started. You know, when I had my own, obviously. Yeah. Um, and. I didn't start writing for little children. I started writing for sort of <coughs> teenagers and, um, you know, kids about 12. Yeah. Um, and that first book I wrote, which was a series of letters, because in those days there weren't any emails, um, that first book was very successful overseas. So it kind of kick-started my career and I got, you know, into the groove of children's writing. Um, and yeah, I, I love it. Do, I, I do. And I like the imagination of it and being able to be silly. <laughs> yeah, sure. Well, exactly. And also bring out that inner child, I suppose, within you as well. Um, a lot of, a lot of, uh, people who write for children end up coming up with a character that tends to stick around through, throughout a series of books. Have you done that? Okay. I did have a character called Henry who stuck around for three books and he was a sort of 12-year-old who was continually bemused by adult behavior and adult values. And yeah. so the humor was, you know, the way he saw the world. I like, I like to do that. And I've now got a new Henry um, called Arlo who lives in the future. 
and is constantly trying to fathom out, you know, the mess we've made of the world. Yeah. 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 So I do do that. Is the key um, to writing a good children's book that it must be also interesting to adults? Because at the end of the day, it's the adults who are generally reading the book to the children, right? Absolutely. Yeah, I yeah. think that's really important. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I, I guess, I, I, I mean, you look at a lot of these cartoons, uh, cartoon movies now, and, um, and, and I, I mean, I see them, and, and some of the humour I'd imagine would go over the head of the average sort of five-year-old. Um, yeah, but, like but, Yeah, well, exactly, um, but I guess children take, um, take from these films and books different things to as well adults. Would, I guess. They do, mm. but also a really important thing, just a minute, I'm just putting them down, um, a really important thing that children take from it is the fact that adults are um, committed to it and enjoying it. Yeah. You know, that's, that's important. We tend to forget that, that, that if the kid sees that the adult likes a book, the kid doesn't expect to understand everything in it, because they don't understand everything in an adult's world at all. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, that what they do understand is that the adult is appreciating the story. Well, it and is. And so it, well, they want to do it. Yeah, see, these kinds of pearls of wisdom um, that I imagine you will be uh, dishing out at, uh, at something that uh, you're starting, a new course, in fact, that you're teaching at the Creative Hub from April the 26th. What is the Creative Hub? Okay, I'm really looking forward to this because this is my new life in Auckland, you see. The Creative Hub is a very um, inspiring, really, school that's right on the waterfront in Auckland. It's right by where that big um, America's Cup or Ocean going, your K- KZ7, is it? Something oh, yes. like that. Yep. Anyway, you'll know more than me. Um, in the bio- Down just at the end of the Viaduct Basin there. Yeah. So it's a beautiful place. Um, and John Craner has set up um, a series of classes there that are evening classes, and uh, people just go and learn all kinds of aspects of writing. So I'm taking advantage of being in Auckland to um, to uh, give a course there on writing for children. Yeah. Um, I've I've done this. All through my writing life, I've, I've taught. Um, I really like teaching adults. Mm. I like spreading the word. And I've, I've got a, a course that I that is a sort of, um, what do you call it, a correspondence course, you know, distance learning course. Yeah. Um, but this I'm so looking forward to because it's face-to-face. It's on Thursday nights and uh, we'll get together and talk and in that first in that first class i'll be finding out what they want from the course because right. that's really important you yeah. know it's a very interactive sharing kind of course but i'll structure it so that there is an opportunity for me to just tell everybody all the things I wish I'd known when I was starting out. Indeed. Well, all the details are up at thecreativehub.net.nz. And, uh, and uh, Janice, we really appreciate um, you spending some time with us this morning and taking some time out from the grandson who now demands your attention. So um, we will leave you to that and, uh, and have a great day. Thanks very much. Thank you. It's bye. now t- bye. It's now ten minutes away from nine here on the Radio Wemo Breakfast. Got a track here from Modest Mouse.